We are going to cover some models on the respiratory system. Here you are seeing a model of the larynx. Up here is the hyoid bone. And down here you're seeing the thyroid cartilage. And down here below it you can see the cricoid cartilage. And below that you're seeing the tracheal C-rings. There are ligaments in between the cartilage as well, so this would be the thyrocricoid ligament. It's named for the two cartilages that it connects. On the back side, we see the tracheal C-rings are not O-rings. They don't go all the way around. And this muscle is showing you that it's the trachealis. Now, it's good that we don't have tracheal O-rings that go all the way around because right behind this structure would be the esophagus. And when you swallow, that bolus of food needs a, a um, expansion of the esophagus and you wouldn't want it to be pushing up against something more rigid like O-rings. So the trachealis allows for the esophagus to kind of expand as you swallow, meaning it, it allows give. Up here, we are seeing the arytenoid cartilages, and on top of them, the corniculate cartilage. <coughs> where is the, the corniculate? The you tip? see where these lines are? Yeah. That reflects where the arytenoid ends and the corniculate begins. Oh. <coughs> of course, we're missing another cartilage. This is made of elastic cartilage, and this is the epiglottis. And then inside the model, we see the true vocal cords that are white. They are avascular. That's why they're white. They don't have a blood supply. These guys. <laughs> yes. Okay. And the arytenoids, when they move, they um, cause the true vocal cords to open and close. And when this model was functioning, when the arytenoids were moved, whoops, the vocal cords would actually move, <clears throat> but it's been abused by students. Now, over here <clears throat> is another model. The same thing, we see the thyroid cartilage <clears throat> and the hyoid bone. And this is the, um, the ligament that goes in between them, the hyothyroid ligament. Down here you can see the tracheal C-rings again. And on the back side, we see the epiglottis. The epiglottis right there. And its purpose when you, you um, swallow, the muscles around the larynx help pull your larynx superiorly and the epiglottis folds over and covers the glottis. That's its function, is to cover the glottis so that your food continues posteriorly in the esophagus and doesn't enter the air passageway. <clears throat> now, if I open this model up and look inside, we see on this model, this lower ridge represents the true vocal cord and this upper ridge right here represents the vestibular fold or the false vocal cords. Then, of course, the trachea continues inferiorly. Now we can go to this model, which basically shows the same thing here. We have the hyoid bone, thyroid cartilage, and this is showing you just one lobe of the thymus gland. And then, sorry, thymus gland. That would be the thyroid, thyroid I gland. I thinking, what is <laughs> no, thymus? not thymus, thyroid gland. Right there. And then here we see the trachea. And as we move to the trachea down here, we see it bifurcates into the right and left primary bronchi. And then you can see them further branching into secondary bronchi. And then out here it would be tertiary bronchi and then progressively smaller bronchioles. Now I'll remind you, <clears throat> oxygen poor blood is arriving in the lungs through a branch of the pulmonary trunk. It's an artery, right? And then oxygenated blood would go back through the paired pulmonary veins, back to the heart, the left atrium specifically. These hexagonal structures that you see on the surface of the lung are lobules. The right lung has three lobes and the left lung has two lobes. The right lung has 
an oblique fissure and a horizontal fissure to give three lobes. The left lung, oh, that's not the right one. Not the, uh, that's not the and that's, that's actually, also that's also the right lung. Oh, that's what I thought. <laughs> it is the right lung, but it's not the right. correct one that I <laughs> wanted right now. <laughs> anyway, the left lung only has two lobes, and it has the cardiac notch on it. Thank you. The left lung has an oblique fissure only. It does not have a horizontal fissure. So like I said, these structures that you can see with the naked eye are called lobules. And then if we look at this lung model, we see on the underside that the lungs are firmly attached to the diaphragm, mm -hmm. which is good because the lungs are not muscular structures. They have, they need to change their volume size, and in order to do that, they rely on skeletal muscle like the diaphragm shown here, and your external intercostals to expand the thoracic cavity, and they are stretched open, and that allows air to flow into your lungs.